so welcome back to my channel today i am going to discuss regarding some leftover points in csf rhinoria as an add-on video to my previous video on this same topic so today we are actually pretty much concentrated on discussion about firstly omaya classification of csf rhinoria secondly approach to a case of csf rhinoria on the basis of this omaya classification thirdly indications and treatment modalities in conservative management of csf rhinoria and lastly the indications and approaches of surgical management in a case of CSF rhinoria. So, um, firstly, starting with the part of the Omaya classification, Omaya et al. had classified this very CSF rhinoria into two broad categories, and they are traumatic and non-traumatic CSF rhinoria. they were actually reluctant to use the term spontaneous csf rhinoria as they thought it to be a part of this non-traumatic csf rhinoria only and thus had used the term non-traumatic instead of spontaneous csf rhinoria coming to the point traumatic csf rhinoria was being classified as an accidental and iatrogenic variant so accidental and iatrogenic variant very importantly these can be again of two types acute or delayed onset acute onset or um, presentation should may be acute when it is within seven days of the injury whereas if it is delayed by seven days then this is delayed presentation or delayed onset of the CSF rhinoria in a traumatic variant, correct? Coming to the non-traumatic variant. They had classified the non-traumatic variant into high pressure leaks and normal pressure leaks. High pressure leaks and normal pressure leaks. The high pressure leaks can be because of tumors in the brain or maybe because of hydrocephalus. Tumors may directly contribute to CSF rhinoria, even may indirectly contribute to CSF rhinoria by causing an obstructive hydrocephalus. So, hydrocephalus can be of obstructive or communicating variant. Next, the normal pressure leaks can be because of firstly congenital anomalies, secondly osteomyelitic erosions, thirdly focal atrophy involving the olfactory region or intracellular region most of the congenital anomalies cause normal pressure leaks in except the hydrocephalus which may also be associated with normal pressure leaks in very less um, cases whereas mostly it is associated with high pressure leaks only correct so now Coming to the point of approach to a case of CSF rhinoria as per Omaya classification. So, as we have already discussed that this very thing CSF rhinoria can be of two types as per Omaya classification and that is traumatic with history of antecedent trauma and non-traumatic. Now, the traumatic one, again we have already discussed that it is of accidental etiology or maybe iatrogenic that is surgical etiology. Now, in both of these cases, 
there has to be a neurosurgical intervention and in case of accidental etiology if there is no such major neurological injury being detected by the neurosurgeon he or she may wait and may go with conservative management if the case is being recognized within seven days of etiological event that means if it is of acute onset or presenting acutely with conservative management if it's resolved well and good if not go with surgical repair whereas if it is being recognized delayed that means more than seven days from etiological event delayed presentation then we should have go for surgical repair as the first choice of intervention coming to the point of the accidental etiology with major neurological injury surgical repair has to be done as the first choice now non now if there is surgical etiology if it is because of any kind of iatrogenic injury then if the injury as well as the csf lick is being recognized immediately during the operation means paraoperatively then surgical repair is the first line of treatment whereas if the if the csf leak as well as the injury is being recognized on a delayed onset then the surgeon should first go with conservative management if resolved with conservative management well and good if not then surgical repair is again the choice of treatment now non-traumatic non-traumatic csf rhinorrhea can be of spontaneous onset or can be of or can be of other causes like congenital neoplastic or inflammatory etiology if it is because of spontaneous onset csf rhinorrhea first the nasal secretion has to undergo biochemical analysis of beta 2 transferrin and beta 3 proteins to confirm that it is csf then the preoperative defect localization is done with some intratrical dye injection uh, about which i have actually discussed in my previous video on csf rhinorrhea and then with neurosurgical consultations the patient should undergo surgical repair of the lick whereas if it is of other etiologies rather than spontaneous onset then neurosurgical consultation done and surgical repair should be done as the first choice correct so in a case of spontaneous csf leak the patient should undergo a beta 2 transferrin and beta trace protein analysis of the nasal secretion to confirm that it is csf primarily if the report comes out to be negative then it is unlikely a csf leak and no further investigation is needed whereas if the patient is found to be positive for these two proteins then we should check for the active state of the leak if it's active and the patient is having the nasal secretions at that point of time then hrctpns and skull waste to be done to check for the numbers of the defects present as well as to check for any kind of other suspicious tumors which may predispose to csf leak so if there is a single osseous defect then no further evaluation is required and we may actually directly go for an surgical repair of that defect next if there is multiple osseous defects found on the hrct pns ct systemography is to be done invasive procedure which is an invasive procedure next if there is suspicious meningoencephalocele then 
MR cystinography has to be done, which is a non-invasive technique, which is a non-invasive technique. Next, intermittent leaks. If it is having an intermittent leaks, means the patient is not in active state now, or maybe having intermittent attacks of CSF rhinorrhea, then we should um, actually uh, investigate the patient for primarily at the point of examination at that time if the patient is having a spontaneous CSF leak that means if it is in active state the patient should undergo CT cystinography if not then contrast enhanced means gadolinium enhanced MR cystinography or radionuclide cystinography may be done correct So now coming to the conservative management of the CSF rhinorrhea. Now this conservative management of CSF rhinorrhea. Firstly, when should a patient may be thought of conservative management in cases of CSF rhinorrhea. So it should be firstly if it is a case of immediate post traumatic leak means within 40 years correct and i have already said you that if it is of accidental etiology and presenting without any neurological injury within seven days of the event then and if it is iatrogenic injury then if it is being diagnosed as a delayed complication of the surgery then conservative management may be instituted in that patient secondly in cases of small postoperative leaks and in cases of patients who were actually of poor risk for surgery if he or she is having some kind of other comorbidities so to av avoid the uh, surgical procedure in those kinds of patients we may actually go for conservative management next so what is being done in a patient or with CSF rhinorrhea as a conservative management so firstly the patient's bed should be rested in head up position that is about 30 degree up patient is asked to avoid cuffing snitching nose blowing and straining anti may be given or dry persistent cuff laxatives to avoid constipation and some medications to reduce the intracranial pressure may be given like acetazolamide or prusamide repeated removal of csf via repeat lumbar taps may be done or an indwelling lumbar subarachnoid catheter or drain may be placed Lastly, prophylactic antibiotics to prevent meningitis may be given, although its use is pretty much controversial in some as per some resources. The same thing is being written over here again, and the conservative management thus include subarachnoid drainage through lumbar catheter, strict bed rest, head elevation up to 30 degrees, stool softeners that is laxatives and have to avoid cuffing, sneezing and nose blowing and straining, prophylactic antibiotics, it is being written over here, it is possible and it is being also written in here that routine administration is controversial, best data support the use of antibiotics in a, after a traumatic leak but even these data are far from conclusive and the other if data for other etiologies is spurs. and again one more thing is being written over here that is in some countries, immunization against streptomyomonia, hemophilus influenza, and meningococcus is also being given as a prophylaxis in CSF rhinorrhea.
now now coming to the point of surgical treatment firstly indications of surgical treatment i have actually said you already that any kind of non traumatic csf rhinorrhea yes we need to go with surgery surgery and surgery as the first line of management secondly secondly if the patient is having a failed conservative management for 2 weeks then also we may shift the patient to a surgical intervention rather to wait for the resolution of the case correct next i have also said you if it is delayed post traumatic csf leak that means more than 40 years after trauma i have specifically said you as per cummings that chart was from cummings okay so then it is being mentioned as um, more than 7 days so more than 7 days um if it is being presented late okay mm, then without any neurological injury even after a accidental trauma and in case of surgical intervention surgical trauma means cytogenic cesa brain or yeah mm, par operatively if it is being immediately diagnosed then also surgical treatment is being instituted firstly next is if there is any kind of massive post operative leaks and recurrent leaks massive then also we may go with surgical management then if it is associated with facial fractures then also then indications for intracranial exploration means neurosurgical intervention is to be done if there is large skull vis defect with brain herniation and foreign body penetration penetrating the brain then lastly if there is meningitis and pneumocil refractory to conservative treatment by one week again we should have gone for surgical management now lastly to discuss for today's presentation is about surgical approaches to a case of um csf rhinorrhea we the ent surgeons are much more in vogue with extracranial endoscopic approach to repair the csf leak which i have discussed in detail in my previous video on csf rhinorrhea and and it is done only when the leak is located precisely and if there is a single small leak of less than 1 cm size but if there is a non identifiable leak or leaks if the leak size is very much large more than 1 cm and if there is some kind of multiple leaks found then we should have gone with intracranial preferably intradural approach to close the csf leak correct so thank you all for your kind listening thank you